Hello Legends, welcome to the Leg Up Australia. I'm Sam Wood. These two palookas are Pat Allendorf, Blake Johnson. How'd you guys go last week without me? Yeah, we killed it, mate. Oh, it's not what I'm hearing. We were on absolute fire. The feedback has been unreal. Obviously, I haven't gotten any feedback whatsoever, but from what Blake said to me, we killed it. Ran very smoothly. Uh, we didn't need a host of your calibre. No Please. stuff ups. Wasn't there? I actually couldn't get through the episode. It was a snore fest. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. I found Snap it was Dancer. Good. Found Snap Dancer. There was, hold on, there was some... I know oh that was the week before, Patty, that you were talking about... Kieran. Oh no, that was this, that was last week's episode you're talking about Mar and Useless and they... Who was it? The Frenchman. For the Frenchman Joe. Frenchman Joe, his horse is in this week. The only Gen- horse that he entered out of the whole stable that was entered into the Brisbane Carnival was uh, Generation, the Doom and 10,000. Yeah, and they've booked Jamie Carr too. $26 into about $8 in, uh, in uh, early betting and then back out to 12 But those who got the 26 are on at good odds. A mate of mine oh. isolated the, uh, the audio from the show and played it to the Frenchman because obviously he only listens to French podcasts. But uh, We... He was not impressed with that information coming out. But like I said, and like I always say, don't tell me the secret then. What's the opposite to a vault? You're that. A vault. A, a non-vault. <laughs> you're, a, you're a colander. He's, uh, he had a quote. He sent a quote in. It was, uh, Merd! Oh, you, oh, all right. That's, well, we won't translate that for our younger listeners, but... um. Yeah, and, and what what else has been happening? I, I've been out of it, guys. Obviously, you know, I had to head down the south coast uh, for unfortunate circumstances. Did Marzu, did, did they just lock in Marzu for the next two Everests? Yep, correct. What? That's huge. That's huge. Has anyone, have they ever done that before? No. No, that's never been done before. But he's a three-year-old, so I guess, uh, I guess it's a pretty good move. They would have got him um, relatively cheap for... I guess if he wins this Everest, they'll get, they get him cheap for next year. Yeah. Well, I think, is that a sign that, you know, it, he's, they'd be competing for anyone else if it comes out here and absolutely pumps them in the Doom and 10,000? They're getting in before the big win? Well, the Doom and 10,000 is an interesting race. I'm, um, I'm excited about it, but not as straightforward Wait. as it Boys, rewind. Rewind a second. I'm not across this. What's happened? Who's taken Marzu for two years in a row? Star and Arrowfield. Star and Arrowfield. So what's the... uh, They have a combined What's the interest there? Do they have an interest there or something in Marzu or... No. Wow. And they've taken a two-year contract. Jeez, this could be some Ben Hunt sort of stuff. (laughs) You think so? (laughs) Jeez. God. Oh, well, good luck to them. I guess they've yeah, got enough money so. so they can take risks like that. It's a good horse. It's a very, very good horse. Some are saying the, uh, the, well, the next Red Zell. Oh, please. Well, yeah, Triple Crown, they've already won two Everest, so another two. Maybe they're just another yeah, two they're... with Marzu. Marzu for two, thanks. Marzu, well, there you go. Two-year contract into the Everest. $600,000 a slot. Locking it up for two years. Let's go. It's pretty big. It it is actually pretty big. In fact, there's a few other big news floating around. There's something that we can't exactly tell you guys about this week, but we'll be able to fill you in next week. We've got something very, very exciting. I don't think there's any real reason that it couldn't go ahead, but we are looking to do something big. Oh, I didn't know this wasn't a secret. I've been telling everyone. Just inbox me, everyone. <laughs> oh, if you want the news, just messenger me outside. It's, it's the colander. <laughs> I, I, turned it, I turned it into my template for uh, getting back to people on my email. Anyway, something, something big for Stratty Day. Something big, big, big for Stratty Day. So, Patty, before you go and tell everyone our secrets, tell the world what pissed you off this weekend or this week, or whatever day it was, because I know what it's going to be, the feature story for You Cannot Be Serious. You cannot be serious, employee. You didn't even give anyone else a chance this week. Come on, mate. (laughs) The boys behind the barriers, we're giving you the leg up, saying it's two laps. Two laps, poi. Oi, poi, two laps. Yep, thumbs up, cheers. 
Well, hasn't he gone off early? First, he must have thought. I oh, know you can't probably can't say this, but you know how they do the uh, the betting for first past the post in the Melbourne Cup. Well, M. Poy, give him a ride in the cup. You'd just be getting on him. He'd be firming all week <laughs> if you got a ride on the first Tuesday in November. He's taken off early in the benchmark 58. The uh, the co-trainer has come out and said of the horse Dante. He's come out and said, uh, "We thought we had a spot on for this race. You just go shit. That's a new one." And I <laughs> guess everyone that had had their money on it and thought, "Yep, I'm going to get my uh, get my coin back for the day on Dante. Thirteen dollars." Well, M. Poy. He's uh, taken he off had... early, not realising there was a lap to go. I'll tell you what, I would have loved to. I would have been hated. Actually, I sell washing machines for a living for anyone out there that uh, wanted to know, but I would have hated to be washing his silks after that because when the um, when the field squared up to him after he'd run past the post first, I reckon he would have shut his dax. Because, uh, he was in a bit of trouble. Stewards called him in. He got to the, uh, the stewards' inquiry four hours late. They said, mate, why are you running late? And he goes, oh, mate, I, I don't always go early. <laughs> couldn't be early. Yeah, couldn't be early. I went early the other day, so I uh, thought I'd be a bit late. But yeah, two mate? months he's got. He's given no one a chance, and you cannot be serious. And uh, he's written himself into the folklore of jockeys that have gone off too early. I think there's uh, probably three of them. Can you name them, boys? No. Reese McLeod is one of them. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anyone ever will ever forget the Reese McLeod ride. But uh, there, there was one more. We'll, uh, we'll let, the, let the viewers ride in, or let the listeners ride in and... Uh, and let us know who the third one was. Uh, BJ, what's your thoughts on this? Oh, I actually liked your post on Twitter that it's just another way to do your money. In fact, Fox Sports liked it as well. It was featured with Fox Sports, your Twitter your Twitter post. But uh, what do you make of this? Uh, well, what I didn't know was it was actually a pickup ride. So I was pretty um, pretty harsh on him. Um, I, like, it, it just... <laughs> It says that he, he hasn't even looked at the form guide. Like, he hasn't looked at the horse's previous runs or he hasn't done any type of homework. He's just been legged up and expected to get paid for the ride. So, like, I think every, he deserved every bit of two months. Um, the only leniency that you could possibly give him would be that it was a pickup ride. I'm not sure if he picked it up the race before or anything like that. <laughs> three, at the you, barriers. Three minutes think... beforehand. That's that's the only way that you could be uh, forgiving of it. But, geez, like if you picked it up at the start of the day, surely you pick up the form guide and, and have a look. Just well, have a quick look pick at up how long the race is. 28-20, isn't it? Uh, just just have a look at that, if anything. <laughs> the, but... You know, uh, Poy, when he's picking up the form guide and seeing it's a benchmark 58, he's riding a kite and he's going, yeah, stuff this. Let's get this over <laughs> as quick as possible. How good. How good. He gave the horse a pat past the post. He was pretty happy with himself. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they were hindering for using the stick too many times in the first 100 metres, not the last 100 metres. The wonder, first... They should have whacked him for a fine too because because he's, he's used up his... his um, his whips prior to the <laughs> prior to the six hundred. They should have hit him with that too. Oh, I think he's he's appealing the two months. I I wouldn't be letting him off. I think he deserves he deserves every bit of it because like you you've got punters losing their money. It's a terrible look. Um, you've got the owners doing their dough. Do. The stable only a small stable. Um, they thought the horse could win. So who do, who's to say that they haven't had a, a significant bet for themselves? Like, it's just not good enough. Like, you're getting paid as a professional athlete. Um, it's basically like Greg Inglis taking the one point when Souths were two points down. Well, I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> where, where was that? Where was the horse in the market? He $13. Was $13. He was, he was fair. Oh, I man. think he was about 15 into 13 or 15 into Put it this way. Like there that. would have been some battling punter out there that would have had his last on it. Yeah. No doubt. There would have been someone trying to get back. There'd be, there'd be hundreds of those bikes. That's why, I think that's why Blake's saying that the, the punishment fits the stupidity. Yeah. And do you know what? It's just so funny that just after it's happened, I sort of think half... I, I would argue that he shouldn't get two months because the the punishment is the fact that this will never be forgotten. <laughs> it's not, like, it's not will always be the bloke that took off too early. Poi. Just like just like McLeod did. So I, I'm on the other side, Blake. I sort of think two months is a bit harsh. Like he's uh, 
He's written himself into fo- the, it's a, it's almost like the Darwin Awards of racing. What would you give him? What what do you think's a, a fair punishment? I reckon a fair punishment would be that that the ride is replayed at every local meeting before the meeting for two weeks. No suspension for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like it deserves more than um, any type of misjudgment in the run. Like for example, Huey. Um, the Andrew Adkins hot, hot and hazy hazy incident. Um, I know that was dangerous and reckless, but that was a a moment in time, like a split second decision to like push out. Um, this is an, an accident that that could have been completely avoided. And I know that he, he hasn't hurt anyone or he hasn't done any any damage to anyone, but um, it's a bad look for the game, and it's just. It's a bad look for punning in general. Like he, he's hurt people financially. I have a feeling we'll it's get true, some but... feedback on that comment. <laughs> he's also hurt people. Um, he's sorry, not hurt. He's hurt his own uh, reputation. Yeah, no doubt. But a, like a it's massive... so he should. So he should. It's, it's a mistake. Look, it's just a mistake. It's just a mistake. You know, but it's not. That's that's a that's a mistake that you can't make. Like a a mistake that you make in the run where you accidentally come out on top of a horse or something like that, like, this is a mistake that it should not happen in racing ever. Just to... Yeah. Like, you, you're privileged. You're privileged to, to be able to be legged up onto a horse and to get paid to do what you love. So, like, you're not getting paid for the two minutes that you're on board the horse. You're getting paid for the work that goes in. You should be sitting there and actually having a look at the race and like, how am I going to give this horse the best possible chance? And he obviously hasn't uh, uh, done that because I, I know it's a pickup ride, but you've got 35 minutes between each race, at least pick up the form guide and have a look at what the horse has done. Maybe watch a replay. Uh, it's just not good enough. There's brain fades in football every weekend though. Like it, it, that's got to be comparable then. Regardless of you know, because people have got their money on the footy too. There's tens, there's no one's tens run of out. No one's ever run out. And, no one's ever run out and started running the wrong way, except Marty Bella. Yes, they have. <laughs> it, it, it's not a brain, brain fade. fade. It's, not, it's not a brain fade. It's not. It, that's it not a brain be, fade. What just? It's poor it's preparation. preparation. Like, but I don't know. I, that's not a brain fade. Do you think he did the form for the race and then he forgot that it was a twenty-eight hundred meter race? No, the brain fade is that he didn't put his head behind it. That's he didn't not a brain go through fade. the form. A brain fade is an accident. Like that Well, it brings me to this old saying failing to prepare is preparing <laughs> to go a lap early. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> what would be the comparable in footy? They just go in at half time and have a shower and get changed into their normal kit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> put their clothes on and leave. Or oh, just getting the tip from the tip off, uh, tip off, going to the wrong side and kicking a goal on the wrong side. Well, the, the tip off? What are we playing? Basketball. <laughs> kicking a goal. <laughs> kicking a, that's why I got dropped. First week of basketball. Yeah, there's a go on. <laughs> Great kick on him though, but wrong sport, buddy. Maybe it would be like in, in footy. It would be like be like in the first ten minutes, kicking a field goal to be one nil up. And then getting beat forty to one, something like that, and celebrating the forty, c- celebrating the field goal in the first ten minutes. Well, like it'd be like going to the game. Olympics for the eight hundred meters and just running the four hundred. <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly yeah. what it would be like. <laughs> yeah, going posing near the clock. I like that he patted the horse. Like, jeez, yeah. you you brained him. You brained him. <laughs> he was like, "This is nice horse." <laughs> Oh, that was wish could be this easy. Can't what believe a this pick is up a, ride. You can't believe this is a pick up ride. <laughs> um, oh, mate, it, it's Do you know it is whoever madness. he picked it up from though. He'll be uh, he'll be into them because yeah, what if he rang him and said, "How do you think this is awesome?" Go, oh yeah, it'll go good the first lap. <laughs> Make sure you get going early. Make sure you get the horse going. Actually, real beat a couple early. of horses home. Yeah, I know. So they're so they're no hope. <laughs> For all those form students out there, they're obviously just going to be scratchings when you're doing form in the future. <laughs> what are you drinking, Hulk? What are you? Is that why you got your green shirt on? 
Oh, no, that's a photo of me. The oh, no. Me on the <laughs> oh, that's, that's cute. Um, let's get into these feature races. We're going to kick off right now, right here, with one of our favourite races. It, BJ, we're going to Scone. Scone. The Group 3 Dark Jewel Classic Race 8, 1,400 metres. 20 degrees out there on the weekend, fellas. It's a soft five. Looks like there's going to be a little possible light rain. Our current favourite, uh, Legay Solil at $5.60. Never <laughs> Talk at $7. Brooks by a $7.50. Majestic Shot, $8.60. Wonder Bar, Mirror Vision. The rest are double figure odds. Nothing really sticking out. Um, Nicky's Flynn's in, Paddy. Ruby Tuesday. It's a good race. This 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 going card's not too bad, these feature races. It's a much better meeting than the last couple of weeks at Hawkesbury and, and Gosford, respectively. Gosford. But um, <laughs> all do I respect like this race. as well. Respectively and respecting. What do you like about it? Who I, do you I, like? I'm, I like um I like the favourite. I like the favourite. I like the gay Soleil. I think um that race, uh, like the most of the horses come through, like Fashion Hour and the favourite Brooks Buyer. Um, I thought that race went really poorly uh, at Hawkesbury, so I think the market's going to be against those sort of horses. And, and a lot of these horses are bringing in um, a lot of heavy track form, uh, and I guess they're on heavy legs. Um, this this mare, she's always been destined to. Breakthrough in black type company. I think she gets her chance on Saturday. She's got a terrific fresh record. I think she's won at least her last three fresh runs. Um, last preparation, she was not in a winning position. I think she was at least 10 lengths from the leader. That was in benchmark 88 grade. She was well supported that day. Um, and she produced the best sectional of the day between the four and the 200. And the race was over. Um, Eased down on the line outstanding win then she started 290 in in group three company uh spelled immediately immediately after so she had excuses there she trialed super for this uh, mcavoy was on her in both trials i don't think she gets back to last from barrier seven and gee i think she's going to be really hard to beat le gay sole what do you reckon patty who are you liking i'm liking brick spy mate. i've got to disagree with you there blackie i think uh I think it got into a bit of trouble during the run and just never looked comfortable. Was throwing its head around and then straightened up and probably copped half a check there. And I know it was sent out favourite, but didn't get any luck. So I'm happy to forgive it first up. Second up here, got a good second up record. Four starts for two wins. Steps up in distance slightly. I think it's suited here and juicy price, $7. If you took the 240 last start, I'd be more than happy to take the $7 in this race. Yeah, I reckon, um, I reckon she was playing the other day. Um, she, I, I thought she was in a, a winning position. She was within a couple of lengths uh, at the top of the straight. And she just but, didn't go on with the job. And that race, I, I really want to be against that race. Copped a few bumps though there. So she I, did. I'm sort she of did. inclined to forgive. Sometimes they can, some of these horses, when they cop the slightest bit of interference can give up. And I know that's weak, but it is a nice horse. And if it gets better luck in running and less interference, obviously, then... I think it's there for it. Okay, fair enough. We currently got uh, a Gay Salil best price five dollars sixty with Boom Bet and Brooks Buyer Sports Bet. I think I just actually saw Top Sport have it as well at seven fifty. So if you're hunting around for a good price, yeah, and play that's who's got so. them on Thursday night. Yeah, what Let's price go. do you have? Um, what price Brooks Buyer mate? Seven dollars or seven fifty? Seven fifty. Seven fifty. Your beauty. Brooks Give me more. Fire. Yummy, yummy. Oh, mate, um, okay. do you, know how, you know how you said Warrnambool was one of your favourite carnivals that you wanted to go to, Blake? I'd love to get to a scone a scone carnival. Would you? My old man actually won this race um, as Did a he? trainer. Yeah, he won it with a, a man named Stella Piccolina? Marie. Stella Marie Stella won Marie. this race. I think she actually hold, I spoke to him on the phone just before, and he reckons that she still holds the record for the race, the race record. Of all the races he won, he's talking about the horse that he trained that has a race record at Scone. <laughs> Scone. Yep. <laughs> Probably won the guts of 40 Group 1s, and he's talking about the Scone race. Stella Marie. I think she was probably I, I, uh, his best horse that he trained, just about. 
Hey Blake, are you you and the boys going to talk about um, scone this episode? Yeah, that's, that's oh, well, exactly I'll tell, the conversation well, I'll we tell have. You what happens? <laughs> <laughs> Set the scene. Uh, Blake, have you, you, you done the podcast yet? Yeah? Good... <laughs> Get me on. Um, did your man have a long training career? This... Yeah, maybe ten years. Many... Ten. Really? Maybe. Yeah. I never knew that. I still think he's got his trainer's license. We should train one for fun under his license. Yeah, good idea. Can you do that? <laughs> I don't think that so. your yard, Pat. We'll have to keep it down there because you said wild. Yeah, I, mate, I could give up mowing and we could spell one in. Your kids would Not spell. It. Not What's spell. <laughs> Man, it, it would never spell. <laughs> no, it'd be like Shelby 66. Well, we're going to yeah. have to talk about him in the, uh, in the Doom in 10,000. Goes around again. I think we will have to. Do you want to do? Where, where do you want to go? Can we get? Can we get more for Bill out of the way, and then then head to the Doom and Ten Thousand at Eagle Farm? Yeah, of course. Oh. Okay, yeah, well, let's mate, head I there. Know what you like with Adelaide? Get it out of here. Race eight, twenty five hundred meters. The Group One South Australian Derby. Nineteen degrees down there. Overcast. It's going to be a soft five. There's going to be. A slight chance of rain, 71% humidity for all you weather fans out there. Uh, Allegron is our favourite at $3.05 with Boombet. Detonated Jack at $4.85 with Boombet. Jungle Magnate, seven fifty with Top Sport. Harley Moving, 8 bucks with Playup. Oh, what do we got? Yafford is 18 bucks. the best of the rest. Uh, Paddy, kick us off. For the Mate, South Australian Derby, I reckon this is a ripping Derby race. You've yeah. got oh, you don't like it. Mm. You've got Detonator Jack coming through, Kira Mar and David Eustace just bringing one into one of these twenty five hundred meter races off the back of three starts. You've got the good horse Allegron that's run the placings by Natatsu. You've got Harley moving and Jungle Magnate that fought out a nice close finish last start. I just think it's a ripping three year old race. I um. <laughs> I have fallen on the uh, the outside of those four that I've just mentioned in Harley Moving. I think it's probably got a good bit of upside. Home track, its run last start was great, where I think it just <clears throat> it was never going to be able to run down Jungle Magnate. I think it was in the Chairman's. It, uh, Jungle Magnate just yeah, kept I, going. Yeah, I, um, I think Ryan Hurdle thought he was on far lap. He was, yeah. he was still, he was, I reckon, 15 lengths from the leader. Um, at the 600 and wasn't even busy. Yeah, well, they can only run home so quick and Ollie got going earlier than um, than Hurdle and I think that was sort of the telling factor. I reckon if he was up on the back of, um, of Jungle Magnate earlier and getting going probably a fraction of a second before Ollie, then he probably runs him down. But I guess for the people that backed Jungle Magnate last night, they would say it was hard. It was easily held on the line. But I reckon plenty of upside run right through the line, this horse. Um, was set a massive task. It was probably equal to the task that Daisy's was set trying to run it down two starts earlier when it beat the field by four lengths. So I think this this horse has turned a corner. It's, I know it's about ninth up this prep, but it um it looks like it's getting better as it's getting over these longer distances. So I'm happy to go with it at the seven dollars. <coughs> Harley moving. Harley moving. I agree, Paddy. I agree. Um, I agree um, in regards to swap the runs swap the result there because he was just too far back but um I, I, wasn't I'm, on the screen most of the time i know he just he, he like just watch the replay it was just a, it was just the perfect derby well, setup but, but watching the replay you couldn't see the horse for most of the race because it was that far back the the camera angle <clears> they must have been doing it on a four by three not a 16 by nine for those people that know their cameras <laughs> out there thank you very much <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> That's too good for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, are you with are you with Harley moving, or no. you're just agreeing with Patty? I agree with Pat. I agree with Pat, but I'm not with. Do you like horse. my horse? No, no. absolute Top camel. Four. Top four. Uh, I I think I, I'm with the the human derby in John Allen. Uh, I think Detonate Jack is a very very good horse. Uh, he's never been in a fast race. Uh, he's three from three. Uh, so he's 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 been in three very slow races, but his closing sectionals in each of them have been 
that of a, a group horse. Uh, last start, he was 1,600 metres to 2,100 metres. Had to make a sustained run from the 1,200. Uh, I think he had the best last 200 metres of the meeting at the end of 2,100 metres. So I'd suggest that he's going to eat up 2,500 metres. Um, he's drawn 14, so hopefully... Johnny Allen can find cover with him, and he's from the right stable. Murray and Eustace, they know how to win a derby. Uh, they've just done it with Hitotsu. And I think $4.50. Oh. If, if I was to play him in the race, I'd be, be taking best of the best because I think he can get out in the market. I think he might start between 5 and $6. And at that pr- price, he's the one that I want to be with. Um, the horse that I think is the roughy in the race is Yafet, um, Yafet. Uh, he was a, a really good derby trial last start. Um, he beat a horse called So You See Two Back. That filly, um, she was really well supported in the Oaks. Last start, drew 15, went back to last, swapped the runs with Elzame, uh, swapped the result. And three back, former round detonated Jack, was only uh, one and a half lengths behind that horse there. So uh, draws 12, uh, I'd suggest that they are a little bit more positive and, and put him into the race. So he's my roughie in the race, but the one that I think will be winning the race is um, Detonated, Detonated Jack. And are there any other Allens on any horses in the race that you'd like to tip? Yeah, the two Allens. I mean, take the, the two color. Allens. It's a double <laughs> Allen. Benny and John. They're obviously brothers, aren't they? Uh, I don't know. They're not. Johnny's an Irishman. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think they are related, but they can be oh. brothers for today. Oh, well, I could be, Joe. I might take the Quinn Allen. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Straight over his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the mask table. Oh, yeah, be best Quinella. Quinella. Oh, you got it. The mask table, well, they just take the piss with, with their setups into these uh, three year old distance races, don't they? We'll just, yeah, it'll come out of a benchmark 78 at the hillside. I oh, know, put him in the lakeside track, benchmark race, 2,100 metres, and then we'll just go to a derby. Yeah, they, they, they are too good. The winning derbies out of the Tasmania bloody race then. Freaks, absolute freaks. Oh, you, you're on them fans now, are you? No, I'm saying freaks in the nasty way. What was the... <laughs> <They're> freaks. <laughs> they what was their freaks. other derby horse name? What was his name? Explosive Jack. Explosive, Explosive Jack. Jack. Yeah. Remember, he lost a big, uh, a big all up of ours once. Yeah, he he, he got beaten in the uh, the Queensland Derby. You just went no, one, the one derby too many. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of mine. Another one of Woodheads. Oh, that's crooked. For those listeners that don't know, we we did used to do big multis. We'd choose one horse every week and multi him up. And the roller. Both, both times we got to four thousand. Uh, Woodhead, Explosive Jack and Zaki were the we didn't two that let us down. Right. That's why we stopped it. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> why we put it. Oof, in, killing ourselves with it. Uh, I, I actually like Allegron, but BJ, I might ask you about Allegron. Two dollars looks a good price, but I might ask you about that in overs and unders. Just giving yeah. you a bit of a, uh, of course, a heads up. Heads up. Um, we'll circle. Back. All right, let's get let's let's head on over to Doombin. Step out this ten thousand across the road at Eagle Farm. Right now, it's. Feels like 21 degrees. Feels like 22 degrees on Saturday. I don't think so. It is horrible on the coast. Absolutely horrible up here. Uh, we're soft six, I hope. We're getting a ton of rain at the moment. Eagle Farm, race eight, 1,200 metres. The Group 1 Doombin 10,000. Guys, how exciting. What an exciting race. It's strategy season. Uh, winter racing at its best. Marzu currently is the favourite. Three dollars and five cents with Boom Bet. Kementari nine dollars. Count to rupee, Patty, ten bucks. In Triviere at ten twenty. Isotope eleven dollars. I'm gonna go into this a little bit because it is a great feel. Generation as you mentioned before, uh, BJ with Jamie Carr on board, twelve dollars twenty currently. Rothfire sixteen dollars. Zoo style twenty one. Minhaj, Vega one. Shelby 66 sitting down there at 51 at the quote. Signora Fox, Baller and Alpine Edge. What a what a fantastic race. It's a great race. <laughs> Wouldn't this just confuse the shit out of M Point? We're running the Doom and 10,000 across the road at Eagle Farm. <laughs> oh, he... <laughs> 
I must Maybe. be early. <laughs> where is everyone? <laughs> oh, I'll win every race today. Oh, where is everybody? Wow, well, we have, haven't we this got some a, runners in this race? Brilliant, brilliant field they've assembled here, isn't it? It's a good race. Um, I, th- I don't think it's as, as straightforward as the market suggests, Pat. No, I think the I think probably the weather's opened it up deluxe. Yeah, I would tend to agree. I, I give I give chances to a, a few outside. Like I, I think um, I think generation. I don't think he can win this race uh, personally. I think that he he might be a Stradbroke horse, but um, at way for age, he, he probably can't win this race. I think Marzu is obviously the one to beat. He's the horse that I have on top. He's been outstanding so far this campaign. What is he, three or four from um, as many starts? And he comes off a, a win in the arrow field on a, a heavy track. That was grand final day. So he's got to get up again, uh, but he's in the right camp to do it with the Peter and Paul Snowden camp. Uh, perfect draw, clipping it in the saddle. He rolled forward. This is his first uh, attempt at group one weight for age and we're, we're asked to take $3.05, but he's a horse with plenty of upside. Uh, Kementari, he was outstanding last start. Very brave horse, and he's a real line chaser now. So nine dollars about him. I think that's a touch of value. And and uh, New Zealand's champion mare on Trivier, and what she's done in Australia, she suggests that she's up to winning a race like this. So I think ten dollars is a little bit of value about her. Yeah, you've mentioned some good ones there. You haven't mentioned the thing that I've got on top, but. So you uh, have settled with Marzu in this? I'm with Marzu. One other thing I would say is Shelby 66, surely he deserves a spell. He's pulled up lame in two of his last three runs. Um, (laughs) And he pulled up lame last start, and seven days later he turns up in Queensland. Uh, So he's had to endure the float ride, and he was lame. Well, this, this 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 actually is Shelby's spell. They've sent him up to Queensland for a holiday, and he's like... Let me go around anyway. <laughs> Let me go around. You know, like, she... I'll get rusty if I don't have a run. Shelby 66 must be a Queenslander. It's got everything about it is like Trevor Gilmeister. It pulls <laughs> yes. itself out, out of hospital. It just pulls the drips out and says, I'm running this weekend. This 10,000 mine. Walks itself out of the veterinary clinic. The trainer... Trainer says, oh, I was going to give you a spell. Do you want to go up to the Marriott? We'll, uh, we'll head up to the, uh, the... We'll go down the Gold Coast. We'll do the theme parks. You can go see no. what? We'll do the theme parks in between the 10,000. I might even go to a Stratty. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> push it out. Um, Stratty, it's out. two weeks away, so you'd have to have a run in between. Oh, yeah, will have a run in between, who's obviously. The, 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 uh, what's his name? Williams, he goes, I just finished reading the Takeover Target book. Maybe I can run this horse every two weeks for the rest of its life. I guess they probably don't. Um, they don't have to go to track work in the morning when they run him every Saturday. So, <laughs> it's an easy horse. <laughs> Just walk, walk him and feed him. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So what? what it, but yeah, there's obviously something not right there. It's forty one dollars as well, and it's getting its. It'll get its bog track this week, so you wouldn't think. Um, no, it needs well, a spell. what was it? It was pretty lame, and then it did it have blood from the nostrils as well. No, 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 that you wouldn't get three be the months. case. He gets three months if, oh. if that's the case. Um, but, mate, I've settled on Count de Rupi here. I'm still with uh, Robert and Luke Price that they will get this horse an Everest slot. And what did I say last time? To get an Everest slot, you've got to beat horses that have had Everest slots or obviously who have two-year contracts to run in the Everest. And mm. uh, if it beats Marzu here, I sort of think it... It's just building its um, its resume to be awarded a spot, and I, I I reckon it'll improve off that first up run where it sort of it looked like it hit a flat spot, but then kept hitting the line. And I, I like this horse. I like Count de Rupi. I think it's going to thrive on the Queensland racing. I know you do like him. I know you like him. But my knock on him would be uh, a really wet track. And what do you reckon? Like, what if Kemantari wins this race? Does he get never a slot? Not a chance. No, thank you. Well, he's, he's got the scalp of Count to Rupee uh, last start, and then he will have had oh. it got, it, got it again on Saturday if he I wins. I think Count to Rupee got, got caught ball-watching there. 
it was too worried about what uh, Kevin Tari was about to do to Big Parade to be concentrated on hitting the line. You think so? Yeah. Kevin Tari was coming through like a wrecking ball. It's a bloody Miley Cyrus ride. Sam, I'll ask you, what about your horse, Rothfire? Where does it go off that first up run? I don't know. Well, we said it. I we actually... Said it. I should uh, let Sam answer, but I actually think that he's the best value in the race. I think he's, he's really? the best value. He's... In my opinion, he's the best horse in the race. Um, he's got to the, the six hundred. He's got the runs on the board. He, you can see that he just capitulated late. He just needed that run first up. He was he was out high bowling, very fast race, uh, and just that last furlong, he knocked up. And he was, I guess what, he was probably about nine months between runs. Um, and if he can get back to anywhere near his best, he's right in this. If, if, he, if he gets back to his best, he wins the race, clearly. Well, I, I actually had to... I was actually going to ask you about Rothfire if, if there was... If we learnt enough from that first run, which obviously we did from what you said, but what about Paul Lele as well? This is a horse that we've all spoken about um, this prep. It's been pretty unlucky. It's been in some big races. Um, I know that we've been aiming to bring it up here and hopefully grab a big scalp or a Group 1 Somewhere along the line, do, you, do either of you guys give it a chance at $12? Oh, uh, mate, I think that small, the small field last start where it sort of got <clears> caught <throat> in a boat race, I reckon it had every opportunity there to run Marzu down. It still couldn't get within three and a half lengths, so I'm happy to put it on the bench for the moment. I reckon Is Marzu a... going to run into any trouble from the barrier? That would be the only thing that might change that. I wouldn't think so, but I think, um, I think Paul Ailey's a... Uh, a real dry tracker. He's not at his best on rain-affected ground. Hence the old, same with Isotope down the bottom. They uh, Didn't they leave Sydney to get away from the super heavy tracks and now they're, they're coming up <laughs> here? Yeah, if she's they, a dry uh, tracker as well. There's a few in the race. Uh, Senior Ed Fox, he's a dry tracker as well. Um, and I think Rothfire is probably best suited on top of the ground as well, but he doesn't have much exposed form on on rain affected ground. Vega runs a good wet tracker. He's he's probably over the odds at forty six dollars. He was a group one winner last preparation, so mm. Yeah, that, the the thing about Rothfire is too, it's had a probably a gut buster going as hard as it did to the six hundred first up off an in long injury and then cops a a heavy track its next start. I I, I don't think it's any favours for its prep having two real hard runs off a long break, so I think uh, I'm happy. You're not to... liking it. No, nah, I'm happy to give it a miss here. I two think two and a half lengths off um, Count the Rupee that day. It was not okay. Well, uh, what, what would be your? What's the best best roughie in the race for you, Pat? The best roughie, mate. I think you hit it right on the head. Is uh, Vega one, or like at the end of the day, you got to trust that these trainers have the horses right, taking them into these big races. It's Shelby sixty six at forty dollars, far out. If you're taking some of those short odds down in Sydney. After it won the Galaxy, I sort of think you've got to have your five dollars each way in on a uh, on a super heavy track. Okay, fair enough. You can uh, can actually get fifty ones with. Uh, I don't even know what that bookie is. It's a sort of horse though that if it wins, everyone will go. Geez, that looked too easy. Like that Bet fifty right. one look. That fifty one looked a lot easier than. Uh, than other things that have started fifty to one, but they yeah, mate, I don't know, I don't know what is going on there. What is going on there, Blake? Fifty to one, and it's a bloody Group One winner. This preparation, uh, I think preparation. he's he's gone, he's seemingly gone off the boil. He's pulled, as I said, he's pulled up lane in two out of these last three. So um, you can forgive. Probably needs a rest. Forgive that, but <laughs> like, geez, he's had he's had to get on the float and travel up to to Queensland in that week since he's pulled up lane. So. I don't know. I'd have to be against him, but we'll see what happens. All right. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great race. All these races are going to be great. Even the Derby, like you said, it, it, these are good feature races this week. Now, obviously we've gone through and we've found some winners, hopefully, for the big races. BJ, have you got anything in the Blake book for us that we can keep an eye out for? Chuck it in your, uh, well, your Black book, and, and hopefully we can find a winner. Yep, I do. I have one. Um, this horse is, uh, I think, the last couple of weeks I've been putting very obvious horses <clears> in the Blake book and they've been coming up very short. 
uh, this was one that I think a lot of people might have missed. Um, he actually ran this last. Is, this so is what people are waiting for. Give this us is one. What we're for. Something Royal last. Charge. Royal Charge. All right. This horse ran last. Uh, Monday the second, so he's going to be in the nominations very soon. Um, he was on the back of 444 days between runs, and he just couldn't keep up over a thousand meters. But he did have the third best last 600 meters of the day. So people are going to miss this horse. He's got a good winning record. He usually improves second up. So if they find a 1200 meter race for this horse, three weeks, something like that. Um, so he should be in the nominations in the next seven days. So. Gee, I think they might go up good odds. He was um, $10 first up, so maybe double-figure odds next time around. 1,200 metres, Royal Charge. Put him in your black Did you say 442 days between runs? 444 days between oh, four, runs. It's lucky, isn't it? Triple fours. Yeah, very lucky. Well, well, well we this, thing, how... <laughs> this thing comes. Must have been there. Must have been off an injury or something, wouldn't it? You couldn't give it that long off just for a, uh, a yeah, spell. Yeah, it, it definitely would have had a setback for sure. Unless it took a gap year. Ga- yeah, ma- maybe yeah. it's been to Europe. To <laughs> Europe. Loves the Greek yeah, islands. A... <laughs> where was the, where was the run, where nice was the run out on the... Where, where did it run out, BJ? Where'd you see it, it come was last? It was at Tari. It was a good. It was a good race. The, the winner's pretty smart. Black Jackamar. It goes all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's too good. Royal charge. I'm back. I'm. I, it's in my. It's in my black book. Okay, good. It's in the book. Open your app. Put it in the book. The Where's app. Pen? Where's the my app? pen? Where's the my app? Where's my pen? Yep. It'll be ready very soon. I can't yeah. wait to get that in my hands. I think it's gonna. Ha- I think it's gonna be a May launch. We're gonna. Tom, do a if soft you're listening, launch. Friday. I'm excited. Friday the 13th. That's tomorrow. Yes. If Tom Ooh. gives just date, Tom, Tom who develops our app, he gives us dates that, okay, this is what day we're going to. And BJ every second day just writes that date into a message. So he's been doing Friday the 13th and a little ghost emoji like just to put the put the pressure on Tommy Boy. He may, he's I'm the coolest expecting. cucumber I've ever seen. And yeah, what a cucumber. He's, he's, yeah. He's cool <laughs> under pressure. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna have we are going to have like walkthrough versions, like so basically ninety nine percent versions for us three this weekend. Uh, then we're gonna do a soft launch into members only, so the members only because they'll be able to go in there uh, and access all their tips and their um, black books and things like that for members only, and then we'll. Uh, then we'll release it to the world. The world. <laughs> Mr. Worldwide. Hell yeah. Why? Mr. Why? Five. Why? Mr. 13th of May. All right, come on. $100 strategy, gents. We need some winners. Oh, we definitely need some winners. Me and Pat have been giving plenty back to the bookies, but I reckon oh. uh, I reckon we'll bounce back this week, Pat. All right, give I us some. Give us two. I want to have, stick I'll it have up no there. doubt. Do you want to stick it up in first? Mate, I'll stick it up in first. First up for me is the Doom and 10,000. Race 8, Brisbane, number 2. Count de Rupee, $33 a win. I'm taking the, I'm taking a, uh, a leaf out of Blake's book with the funny numbers. 33, and trying to trick it. Like it. 33 at $7. No, you get a better price than that. Nine oh, fifty let me have a look. is he? Ooh. Come on, Sam. Nine sixty on Boom Bet, gentlemen. Ooh. Jeez, I tell you what, I know, I know, I know, I know the Boom Bet guys look after us, but I use a program that just gives the best odds. Doesn't matter who it is, and there is more Boom Bet uh, icons on these screens than anyone else. Yeah, and Boom Bet that extra ten cents it really helps. Well, it was an extra two dollars sixty compared to Moneyball. Yeah, but they're only giving. <laughs> Seven dollars. That's fine, isn't it? Moneyball. Yeah, Moneyball. Right. nobody bets with Moneyball. Hey, I'll tell Don't you what. Moneyball is such a good movie. Great movie. Puss odds. Puss, <laughs> great movie. Puss odds. I like that, babe. I we love this a, movie. Yeah, you know they have shit odds. We the app. The app. We should do like a, a just a completely honest bookie review, and that can be what's under. We, we, we are going to do that in the app. 
We just put that on the, the second release for Tom. I actually Great. watched a good sport movie the other day. Have you guys seen Miracle? It's about no, the that American is that the ice hockey, hockey one? team. Yeah. Yeah, against so Russia good. or Canada or something. Russia. Yeah, USSR. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. in the Olympics. They beat them. Um, they beat them in the to make it to the gold medal round. And I don't think they beat them for like twenty years or something like that. Yeah, I know the story, like the true story. But I yeah, don't... because they, I think Russia played um, like professional athletes, and um, America played like a bunch of college students. The Sneaky good, Russians. The good one. Why are they playing better than Mighty Ducks? Ducks? Where was Gretzky? Better than Mighty Ducks. What? Better than Mighty Ducks? Shiver. I think Gretzky was, was he American or was he Canadian? Don't know. Was Emilio Estevez in the team? What about Coach Bombay? Same guy. Coach Bombay. Yeah, he, he, he was very good. <laughs> Uh, All right, we're yeah. going across this S- the oh, no, SA. What, what are you doing? You're just having $33 on Count to Rupee? Yeah. Yeah, win. The SA $9. Derby, 60. we're having race eight, number five, $27 on Harley Moving at $7.50, the odds I've got. Harley Moving, yep. What price What price you got him, Sam? Mm, let me just and refresh then... so I can get a, 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 a fresh. Odds since we oh, last that, did it, so keep going. That name's relatable to Sam's uh, internet, Harley Moving. In fact, Harley out Moving. of the three of us here, this is our new program. Pat's got the best internet, I've got the second best, and the worst is Blake Johnson, <laughs> 70%. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I don't even see myself. Yeah, I'm, I'm 85%, Pat's 99 and you're 70%. Yeah, but that's because I've been putting the most input in, so it's got more ah, to upload. Ah, yeah. It's nah, that's, to... That might be actual health, like Street Fighter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm at 85%. Yes. I'm at 99 And last but not least, in the dark jewel, I'm having 40 bucks. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Harley moving $8 with play-up, best odds. Eight bucks, that's 50 cents more than what I was getting. Yeah, that's why we've got to do this. $27 at $8. 40 bucks, race eight, number 15, Brooks Buyer at the Dark Jewel. Can you give me the odds? Woodhead. Mm-hmm. I thought you said you were trying to um, bash the bookies this week. Some I didn't realise you were trying to, to give, it all, <laughs> no. give more back to them. No here we go. Here. Here we go. Sport. I'll bash you. 70% health. I'll put you down to 40. His health's just gone down from that threat. <laughs> He's down to 40. <laughs> Brooks Buy, you got $7.50. Bang. 40 bucks win on that. Well, and that's that is me. $100. 100 bucks. Well, do you want to update? You're, you're currently sitting at positive $193. Oh, it's taking a hit. No, that's okay. That's not too bad. I've taken a hit too. I'm down to positive 790. So I've, I was above 1,000 at one stage. So I've given a it's few right, this hundred back. This is the week. This is the week. I have All right, no BJ, doubt about give that, us whatever. your $100 strategy, my man. Yep. All right. Well, I'll go in race book order. We're going to Scone. I've got $100 to, to spend. In the first race at Scone, in the, the highway, I don't usually play in too many highways, but the odds on offer for this horse is just too great. So I'm going to have $10. $10 on a horse named Daksha. My internet's been slow to load, um, Woodhead, so can you give me a number there, please? Uh, uh, Daksha, no, he's $35 19. with sports bet. Yeah, that's the best price, too. Number 19, Daksha. He, uh, oh, he yeah. was, he's been well-supported in... Uh, a couple of highways, two back in a high, three back in a highway. He was three deep without cover, had absolutely no luck. Um, he was on heels late. That was behind um, point counter break or something like that. And Shelby 66 runs second. Um, and then last start in a highway, he was well supported and he was he drew wide and he he got back uh, and he was going to run into the race, but he just ran out of room and then he he had to ease over heels and he found the line. Um, I, there's no chance he's a $35 chance. He is the second emergency, but it's a big field. So I'd suggest that there will be a couple of stretchings and he'll get into the race. He's drawn two. Tyler Schiller takes two off his back, $10 on him. Then I'm going to go to race five. This is my value bet of the day. Um, I think that he will end up in Queensland and he will give a race like the Stradbroke a real, stra- real shake. He's only in benchmark 72 grade here, so that's a big call, but... 
Um, I think I Am Lethal is a very good horse. I'm going to be having $40 on him. Best price available is $10. Uh, didn't handle the heavy track first up. That was in the Arrowfield he ran last. He just didn't do anything. Then he's gone back to the trials. He trialed super. He had absolutely no luck uh, in a race at the Gold Coast behind King of Sparta. He had the best last 200 metres of the race. Uh, couldn't get clear at the top of the straight. If he did, he would have he would run in the top three. I know he's one of your horses, Pat. I am lethal. Yeah, he's been one of your yeah, horses mate, in big, the past. I'm big, he has. big John O'Shea fan. Okay, well, I'm, well, that's good because I've got two John O'Shea horses in my strategy. And then the last $50, I'm going to the feature at Scone and I'm going to be having 50 on Legay Soleil at 560 with Boom Bet. Uh, best price Legue. available for all the reasons I outlined before. Sole. And that's yeah. my hundred dollars. Five dollars sixty, BJ. Yep, Are beautiful. You, can you speak any other languages, Blake? Uh, yes, French. Yeah, I could tell how you say Legay mm. Sole. Well, thank you. <laughs> can you get, give <laughs> us some more French? Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Jim Appel Generation. <laughs> Jim Appel Black. Black. <laughs> oh, Black. That's my name. <laughs> Black. It's Black in France. Okay, so we have got the $200 strategies. They'll be up on the socials as per usual. Great show, boys. We've got to finish off with overs or unders. Uh, Mate, just let me I'm tell not, you I'm what not this is my favourite segment. Waiting. I'm not waiting. Let me say why this is my favourite segment. Oh, okay, I'm waiting. This is where punters can make money so easily by just, you can take odds and lay them off and everything. Most of these ones that Blakey says do actually go the way that he says that they will go. So this is this is free money. This is what people should just listen to this the show just for this. It's why we put it right at the end. We bury it. We do. Yeah, so you have to listen to the rest yeah. of the show. Listen to all that other jibber and then bang. We'll give you the real moneymaker. <laughs> oh. Okay, let, oh, oh, Allegron. Allegron, we spoke about it earlier. It's in the SA Derby. It's best, best price you can find is three oh five. Uh, a lot of them are kind of around that $2.70. Uh, BJ, are we taking this? Three dollars and five. Yes, if you like the horse, I'd definitely be taking it. I, I can have him marked as short of two dollars and ten. Um, he was backed as if unbeatable in that uh, race last start on Anzac Day. It took a while to wind up, but uh, he was really strong late there. He gets the the goat on board, Damien Oliver. Most Group Ones in Australian racing history uh, draws perfectly, and gee, he brings the right form. Um, I think he starts. Uh, much shorter than that. And that's why I said that we'd be taking best of the best with Detonator Jack. I think he'll get out the market. But I think Al- Allegron's the one that's going to be really identified by the pros on Saturday. All right, mate. Talk to me. Marzu in the 10,000. I'm yeah. hoping that it... Uh, I'm hoping I can take count to Ruby's price now and you're going to tell me it's going to firm because Marzu is going to blow. Well, I actually do think that he'll get out in the market. I think um, he, he has to start somewhere... Um, in my opinion, between three fifty and four dollars, uh, so he's currently three dollars and five. Uh, so I, I have to get it. I have to get him out in the market. I, he just he, he's clearly on top uh, as the one to beat, but he has to come back and produce his career best again to get him to um, that price. And I just I just think he's he's got to get out of the market a touch, especially Eagle Farm first time. It's a little bit of a knock, um, and as I said, having to reproduce again after his grand final in the Arrowfield, I just I, I can't get him that short. So I think he'll start about three fifty. There you go. You got any other in Pat? I don't, mate. That's, that's that that was the one that I was most concerned about. Okay, there's one more I wanted to ask you about. Uh, and not... In fact, we didn't cover this race, but it's a very good race. And it's not... It's not. Uh, it's a listed race, but it could be. It's right up there with this uh, this other scone race. Uh, race 7. It's the Luskin Star Stakes. Um, and a mat is currently... Let me just update this. I've got 245, but let me see if there's... I just want to get a better picture of the odds so you can kind of say. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, he's um two forty dual acceptor. Where, where I actually, couldn't see that. Someone said that today, but I couldn't see where else they've they've nominated. Yeah, he's a dual acceptor at Scone. Uh, so right. He's, okay. He's in race seven as well. He's in the field in race seven. Um, yeah. And he is two thirty. 235, 240 is the best price available about him in that race. Yeah. Uh, I, I, he's clearly the one to beat in that race, but I think he will get, I think the bookies would take him on if he ran in that race. So that's Scone Race 7, that's the Luskin Star over 1300 metres. Um, yeah. The horse has won two in a row, been very impressive in both. His rating suggests that he, he should be about that price, but there's a couple of things against. They were they were both on heavy 10 surfaces. We're more likely to get to a soft five, soft, five, soft six, which isn't a massive knock for him, but it's a, a di- different scenario. Um, and he's got, to, he's got to go to 1,300 metres. He has yet to tick off a 1,200-metre box. So all his wins have come over 1,100 metres and 1,000 metres. Um, so 1,300 metres is an absolute different scenario for him. So... I think he gets out in the market there, so I wouldn't be backing him in that race. Um, but okay. I think if he gets a run in the other race, which is what the Hortensia. What is Ortensia, the other race? Do you know? The Hortensia, race nine in, in Sydney. Right, okay. um, yeah. He's in the emergencies. Scone. Yeah. I actually think that he's got a run now. Um, just as we speak, Juan Divas come out of that race and Tycoonist has come out of that race. So I yeah. would suggest that he will run in this race. And the best price available is $2.50, and that's with Tab. I think that is a good price about him. Um, the only concern is him um, having to get back onto a drier surface here because this race is over 1,100 metres, so he doesn't have to go the extra distance. He's drawn barrier eight, and um, I, I think that he's probably too good for these um, in this sort of race. So 250 I think he, he probably starts closer to even money in that race. Okay, so if, it, if 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 he runs in race nine, we should be taking the money now. Yes. Race seven, wait. Don't, don't take the money. Yes. Don't take the money. That's good. I'm really interested in this horse. In in, in that Luskin Star, it's Rachel King's got the ride, but in the ninth race, she's obviously with Malkovich and Kieran McAvoy jumps in the saddle. So, um. I'd be surprised if they don't run him in the in the ninth race on Saturday. Okay, now that he's got to it's run. it's still I've with the two coming out. Tycoonus was an emergency and one diva wasn't. He's still got emergency next to his name. Does it need one more to come out? No, because one diva's come out, um, and yeah. then Tycoonus would have went into that spot, but um, he's now coming out. So he, that's okay, yeah, I gotcha. Spot. Yeah, okay, that okay, that makes total sense. All right, sweet. Okay, yeah. very interesting. We could call this segment. Call this segment. <laughs> Bookies this segment. don't want you to know this one secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I like that. This is for the thrill seekers like myself that are just having a look at the little little shorties, the little favourites, the little things that the market seems have already found and when to take it. Because, as you said, Patty, leading into it, it's this can make a huge difference. Huge oh, difference. Mate. I don't know about you, but if I ba- have a bet early in the week for Saturday and it starts a way longer price than what I took, I get filthy on it and half wanted to lose. You death right. Yeah, but you hate money. <laughs> but you do. You do hate. Just, nothing you I'd hate rather this than lose than not win the maximum amount. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, tear the ticket up. Tear the ticket yeah. up. I don't want it. I'd rather lose it. Um, gentlemen, thank you. I appreciate it. We've got a new format, so hopefully everything... Uh, Everything downloads and comes up good. Uh, like I said, listeners, we have some really cool stuff that we get to announce next week. We've got the app coming out in the in the next month. So much going on with the leg up. Uh, thanks for listening. Thank you, gentlemen. Uru punters. Thank Cheers, you boys. boys. Okay, so it's.